first of all, surgery is an option only. We, we only want to use when other things have failed. So we want you to have tried other things. And we are only going to allow or, or provide you with a tool that's going to help you fight this disease. I don't cure obesity. My operations don't cure obesity. What we're able to do is to control the disease long term to help, let me rephrase that, help you control the disease long term. Okay? Who's a candidate? You have to have a body mass index of at least 35 with medical problems associated with obesity or greater than 40. You need to be healthy enough to undergo an operation. Most of your insurance companies are going to want you to have tried other diets. So that's, the, that's that line where they want you to have failed medical weight loss. And you're going to need to understand that this isn't done just in a vacuum. I can't do this alone. You can't do this alone. You need to be part of a multidisciplinary program where you get a lot of help from your peers, from our nutritionists, from your family. This condition does require a lot of support. So what are the surgical options? There are a number of surgical options out there on the, uh, that, that have been tried. There are three that we consider the gold standards or the standards of the current, um, current medical community in the United States. The adjustable gastric band, the sleeve gastrectomy, and the Ruin Y gastric bypass. So lap band, this is a laparoscopic procedure where we're going to make small incisions and we're going to pass these things called trocars through the abdominal wall into your abdomen that allow us to access the tissues on the inside and allow us to pass a camera into your abdomen to see what we're doing. Now with the lap band, the only thing that we're going to do is we're going to wrap this device around the very upper part of your stomach and we're going to attach it to an access port. This access port allows the physicians in the office to slowly add saline to a balloon that lines the device. So on the inside of that device is a balloon and we slowly will inflate that balloon once a month. So when we place it, it's empty and we're slowly going to increase the amount of restriction that you have for food crossing that band into the stomach. This allows us to tighten or loosen to control how much restriction you have to eating. And it allows us to slowly get weight loss. It does a few different things. There are some nerves that travel down your esophagus into the stomach, one called the vagus nerve. And this band, when it's in place and when it's well adjusted, we think gives us some pretty good vagal nerve stimulation, which may help with appetite suppression. In addition, this part of the stomach here is going to stretch early because food has to slow down, then cross the band. And as you stretch that part of the stomach, we're going to feel full and satisfied. A lot different than we do now because this part of the stomach doesn't fill until the whole stomach is full. If you think about it, the only way for this part of the stomach to fill now, to stretch now, is for food to have entered the whole stomach and then to stretch the upper part last. So you're going to get that stretch of that stomach very early after the first few bites. So you're going to feel as if you've eaten a lot of food very quickly. <clears throat> this is a laparoscopic procedure. It is outpatient. Most patients go home the same day. Worldwide, it's the most frequently performed bariatric procedure. And you can lose 50, um, up to 50 to 60% of your excess body weight in that first year. It is an implanted device, and I have to adjust it. If we are not seeing you in the office every four to six weeks, this doesn't really work. So I can't place this device and have you don't, never see me again. It doesn't work that way. It is, a, it is an operation that works with really close follow-up with the patient and the physician. With that, it is extremely safe, and it is the safest operation that I have for weight loss. The lowest rate of post-op complications. Okay. And it's the shortest uh, operating room time. Really does take less than, less than an hour, half an hour, 45 minutes sometimes in the operating room. So why did I start doing bands? It is safe. The weight loss is good, one to two pounds a week. You can eat most foods. Thick breads and thick meats will bother you. You can, there's no exception of liquids. 
meaning you can drink most liquids, and I consider that sometimes good, sometimes bad. I have a few patients that drink Georgia sweet tea. And if you can imagine, Georgia sweet tea is made with a lot of sugar. And I got one patient that has, you know, she thinks it's her right to drink a gallon of that a day. And she's wondering why she's not losing weight. You know, putting two cups of sugar in a gallon and drinking it is going to keep the weight on anybody. So we want you to drink non-caloric liquids. And, um, or we're going to have trouble getting weight loss with the band. So what are the problems? The band, if it slips out of position on the stomach, that's called a band slip. If it erodes into the stomach, that can be a problem. Those are very rare problems. But if they happen, sometimes they require that we remove the band. The most common problem is something uh, called a port or tubing leak, where, we're, where we access the port on your abdominal wall. That's, if it leaks, the fluid just doesn't stay in the system. So it's not that you get sick or anything. It's just that the band stops being effective, and we have to replace the port. So the mortality rate with this is about one in a thousand, so it's extremely safe. You know, that's almost as safe as just going to sleep. In other words, if an anesthesiologist puts you to sleep, there's always a certain risk, very close to that risk with that. So the advantages of the band, the lowest mortality rate, the least invasive approach. We don't have to cut or, uh, or adjust the stomach. We don't have to adjust the small bowel. This is a potentially reversible procedure. If I take the band off, your anatomy is back to the normal anatomy you had before. However, I will tell you that anytime we reverse these, these patients will develop an insatiable hunger. They just tell you that they just can't get their appetite suppressed. They just, there's nothing they can do to feel satisfied. And that weight comes back on in a very depressing way. So usually there's a very rapid regain of weight when we remove bands. The disadvantage is that the weight loss is a lot slower than the bypass or the other operation, the sleeve. And you got to have those follow-ups. Without the follow-ups, this doesn't work. I can tell you, if I, if I looked at my results for patients that followed up and then for patients that didn't follow up and threw the ones that didn't follow up away, my results with the band would be almost as good as the other two operations. Meaning if you are a patient that is willing to do the work to follow up once a month for that 12 to 18 months then s until we get you to a good place, this will work. The group of patients that will see me once and twice and then decide that they don't need to follow up are the ones that don't, don't do well with this operation. So the band, very good choice, very safe choice. The sleeve gastrectomy is a newer procedure. It is, when we say sleeve gastrectomy, the word gastrectomy means removal of stomach. What we do with this operation is actually we're going to remodel or reshape your stomach by removing this part of the stomach. <clears throat> you can lose about 60 to 65 percent of your excess weight in that first year. There's no implanted device. And that hormone that I talked about, that ghrelin hormone, the dominant source of this ghrelin hormone is this part of the stomach called the fundus. So a lot of patients after this procedure tell us that they just don't feel hungry. There's just not a real appetite after this procedure. This operation is also done laparoscopically. Um, most, it takes us about an hour to an hour and a half to do in the operating room. And most patients after a sleeve gastrectomy will stay at least overnight. So it's an overnight hospital stay. Now, as I mentioned, we do it laparoscopically, so we make these small incisions, just as with the lap band. <clears throat> and this allows us to access the abdomen, to stretch the abdomen with some CO2 so that we can see, and then to pass a camera into your abdomen. So when you eat, food travels down that esophagus, as I mentioned before, and it fills this part of the stomach. And then we get stretched at this upper stomach before we really feel full. With the sleeve, we're going to alter how your stomach works by beginning here and stapling alongside this curve of the stomach and removing that part of the stomach. What we're left with is a very narrow tube of stomach that when you eat a small portion of food, this part of the stomach is going to stretch very early. And when that part of the stomach stretches, we get the sensation just as if you've eaten a very large meal and the entire stomach is full. So we're going to get early stimulation of those vagus nerves. You're going to have that early sense of satiety. You're going to feel very full very quickly. And that's going to allow us to have you full, on a, full and more satisfied on a very small portion of food. 
In addition to that, as I mentioned before, we're going to remove this part of the stomach, so we're not going to have that large ghrelin load, so you're not going to have this appetite-stimulating hormone. And so this is a very powerful operation for altering your eating habits and getting great weight loss. Now, the operation is based on one staple on. That's really the only thing that we're going to leave you with. This part of the stomach comes out. So the complications are all related to that staple line. There are gastric leaks, meaning if that staple line doesn't stay sealed, that will be a major problem. Stricture, if I make it too tight in an effort to get you great weight loss, if I make it too tight, then food won't go through. So we try to avoid that by using a specific sizing tube to make sure we know exactly what size we're leaving you with. And of course, when you operate on the stomach and the spleen being sit sitting here, Bleeding is also a potential problem, but that is also something that is very rare. Now the mortality rate with this operation is about 0.2% throughout the United States. That doesn't mean much to you, but has anyone had their gallbladder removed? Laparoscopic cholecystectomy? The mortality for that operation in the United States is 0.2%. Okay? So I don't think anybody's doctor told them not to go get their gallbladder out because they were worried about it. But the mortality rate with gallbladder surgery is about 0.2%. Mortality with this operation is very similar to that. The advantages. I don't have to do any work to the small bowel, which is something that we'll talk about with the gastric bypass. And for some patients, that can be a very big advantage over the bypass. The weight loss with the sleeve can be very similar to the bypass. There's no device. And then for some of our very large patients, um, this operation may be a little safer than the gastric bypass, and that's kind of why we started doing it in the first place. For some of our very large patients with BMIs in the 80s and 90s, patients weigh about six or 700 pounds, it's real hard for us to be in the upper and lower abdomen at the same operation. So we started off by doing just the sleeve with the intention of changing them to a gastric bypass later down the road, and many of them never needed it. So this operation was started off because we wanted to do something that was safer than the bypass. We know the long-term results with this operation are not as clear as the other two. The reason that is, is the case is that we haven't done this operation for 20 years and know exactly how it will respond 20 years down the road. We've got 10-year 10, 10 data that's pretty good, and I can tell you the 10-year data looks pretty good as if this is an operation that will very, be very powerful long-term. Now the real issue is that it used to not be covered by most insurers. and they won't let me talk about insurance up here, but I think that we're getting more and more of the insurance companies on board with the sleeve. And hopefully even um, Medicare in the near future, there's, there's some talk about Medicare starting to cover this. Right now they don't. So that leads us to the sleeve, uh, I'm sorry, leads us to the gastric bypass. Now this operation is the gold standard weight loss operation. It's the one that we have been doing for years. We've been doing this operation since the late 70s in different forms. It is as safe today as it has ever been because of the laparoscopic um, approach that we do with the gastric bypass. But I can tell you, everybody's got their own opinion of the gastric bypass. It gets blamed for everything. If somebody had a gastric bypass 20 years ago and they developed heart disease, everyone thinks it's related to their gastric bypass. Somebody develops gout, they say, well, you know, they had a gastric bypass. Somebody gets hit by a bus. It was their gastric bypass that caused them to get hit by a bus. That's not the case. We know that this operation is extremely safe. We know that you can get 65 to 85 percent of your excess weight loss in the first year. There's no device. We know that we can maintain weight loss long term. In fact, that's another potential myth that we have. Everyone will say, well, they had a bypass and they regained all their weight. Can you regain weight with any of these operations? The answer is yes. Does everybody regain weight with this operation? The answer is no. Most people are able to maintain good weight loss long term. You will feel satisfied with what you're eating as well as full. And there's a very low rate of complications, another myth. The complication rate with this operation is actually very, very low. It is an overnight hospital stay and most people kind of out of work for two weeks depending on your job. So we used to do this through a Midline incision, back when I trained, that's kind of what we did, but we have developed very good laparoscopic skills where we do this entire operation laparoscopically. <clears throat> Just as with the other two, we're going to pass these choke cars in. Now with this operation, we do a little bit more. 
The first thing that we're going to do is create a new stomach called a gastric pouch. We're going to staple across the very upper part of the stomach, leaving you with a very tiny stomach. To utilize that, we're going to separate the small bowel here and bring this piece of small intestine all the way up, and we're going to sew it to that little pouch. So you're going to eat, food's going to enter into that tiny pouch, and then bypass the old stomach. That's why we call it a gastric bypass. So this new stomach that we call a pouch is really small when we create it. I always tell patients you know, when they're eating after a gastric bypass initially is look at your thumb. That's about how tiny your pouch was when I created it. So imagine eating a scrambled egg and feeling full on half of a scrambled egg. That's about right. Okay? So initially it is a really tiny pouch. That pouch will empty into the small bowel and then tr food will travel down that limb. Now if you notice there's a second attachment here. The next question I always get is what happens to that old stomach? Well, it's still there. It still works. It still makes acid. Interesting, the ghrelin level actually after this operation initially stays flat. We don't get those big spikes in ghrelin after a gastric bypass. So most patient, patients will tell us they just don't feel hungry. So we get um, gastric acid from this old stomach still empties. Digestive enzymes travel down this limb. And there's a second attachment here with digestive enzymes um, come in contact with food. Okay? So this operation does do some small bowel work. We do change the direction of how food passes into your small intestine. So the risk with the gastric bypass. As you can imagine, there are a couple of places where we use a stapling device and there are a couple of places where we put things back together. All those places need to stay sealed or you will have a leak. And the leak is, the, in my mind as a surgeon, the biggest concern. But our leak rate's about 1% with this operation, so it's pretty small. Um, because of all the stapling we do, there are some bleeding, uh, potential bleeding problems, which is also a small problem. I can tell you the most common problem that I see in my practice is something called an anastomotic stricture, which is the opening between this pouch or your new stomach to the small intestine. If it gets too small, food won't go through it. Okay? And that happens about 10% of the time. It's actually fairly easy to fix, though. So I'm kind of happy that the most common problem I have is one that's easy to fix. All I have to do is pass the endoscope or camera into your pouch pass a little balloon across that opening, and just inflate the balloon to break up the scar tissue. That usually takes about 10 minutes. So the most common problem is the easiest to fix. Some patients will have some anemia, B12 deficiency, calcium deficiency. And I can tell you, if you have one of these deficiencies, it's because you're not doing the multivitamins that we want you to do. It is rare that we have somebody who is actually following our instructions and taking the multivitamins that we want you to take, not just for a year, but for the rest of your life after this operation, you won't get into trouble with any of these deficiencies. Now, the mortality rate across the United States for this operation is about 0.5%. And that's taking into account every, every surgeon in every practice. However, if we look at centers of excellence, which is what we have here, where the surgeons have done a lot of these procedures, which myself and Dr. Henderson have done lots of these procedures, our mortality rate is a lot better than that. You know, I often have patients, they want to know what my mortality rate for different operations are. And I, I can tell you that, but when I tell you something like 0% with sleeves or 0% with this, that doesn't mean much to you. I really want you to understand what the real risks are. But I can tell you that in the hands of a center of excellence surgeon, the risk of any of these operations is a lot less than it is just nat nationwide. Okay? So the advantages. Rapid weight loss. You're going to lose rate, weight very rapidly with a gastric bypass very predictably. We know the long-term results. You're actually going to lose more weight with this operation than with the other operations. There's no implanted device. In, in addition, that I don't have listed here, is that this operation is a metabolically active procedure. Not only were you going to lose weight, but we're going to fix some of your medical problems even before you lose weight. Diabetes. And I've got another slide on that in a minute. Diabetes is something that will go into remission very rapidly. High blood pressure is something that we will improve very rapidly. Joint disease for a number of reasons. I've got patients that are really dependent on their non-steroidal medications. And after surgery, they're just, they're just not as painful. Their joints just aren't as painful. So for a number of reasons, this operation 
does more than just get us weight loss. The disadvantages, of course, I've got to do more. The operation does more. I have to alter your anatomy in a different way. So you're going to have malabsorption of nutrients. And because of that, we do have a slightly higher complication rate than the other operations. And this operation is really difficult for me to reverse, OK? For me to put this anatomy back together is a really hard operation. The sleeve gastrectomy is impossible to reverse. That stomach is not sitting on a shelf waiting for me to put back in, OK? It's gone. The band is reversible. Sometimes that makes a difference in a patient's mind. So we compare the weight loss. The gastric band is the safest, but the, less weight, uh, the, the least amount of weight loss. The bypass typically has a slightly higher complication rate, and um, we're going to get much. We're going to get a higher uh, weight loss with the sleeve being somewhere in the middle. So diabetes. I mentioned that a second ago. 86% is, is a number that I always remember because some of the landmark studies on, on, on the gastric bypass, 86 to 90% of patients who have diabetes, who have a gastric bypass, will have their condition go into remission. That's pretty darn good. The death rate associated with diabetes is reduced. Normalization of blood sugars. Most patients are off all of their medications. Not only after you lose the weight, many of them right away. I've got some patients that are on lots of insulin, hundreds of units of insulin, and I stop it the day of surgery. And their blood sugar is normalized, and I send them home the day later on nothing. I've got some patients on insulin pumps, and I can reduce their regular, their basal rate tremendously, very uh, right out of the box, having it, and they're still having low blood sugars, and I have to have it even more than that. So the gastric bypass is very powerful for treating diabetes. So what about the other two operations? Well, we weren't expecting the sleeve gastrectomy to be as powerful for, the, uh, for diabetes because we thought it was, had to, a lot to do with the small bowel work. In fact, about half of sleeve gastrectomy patients will have their, their diabetes um, rapidly improve initially. So not 80 to 90 percent, but half. So that's better than we were expecting. And the band is, is also a powerful operation for diabetes but it does take the weight loss with the band. So the band won't, won't change your diabetes right away, but as we're able to get weight loss, we can affect diabetes in the long term. So safety, when we compare bariatric surgery centers across the United States, mortality rate is about 0.3%, which is equivalent to hip surgery, which is a whole lot better than pancreatic surgery, which is 8% or heart surgery, which is 3.5%, or vascular surgery, which is almost 4%. So when we compare bariatric surgery, despite the reputation that we've had from the past, we are extremely safe in, in today's world compared to other procedures. And we're not just fixing diabetes. We're fixing high blood pressure 60% of the time, cholesterol or dyslip, dip, dyslipidemia 70%, sleep apnea, almost 90% of the sleep apnea is improved. So this operation doesn't just give us a cosmetic effect. Our goal is to cure this disease. And when we cure obesity, we're going to fix or cure these comorbidities and extend your life expectancy. So what can you expect? Your food intake is going to change. Okay? When you get right down to it, this operation is going to change your food intake. Not only is it going to change what you can eat, it also changes what you want to eat. Okay? So your food intake is going to change. We're going to want you to get back to work as soon as possible. You know, I often have patients will say, well, when I go home, can I walk stairs? Yeah, we're not going to change it. If you could walk stairs before, you're going to be walking stairs afterwards. We want you to get back on your feet very rapidly. We don't want you to feel as if you've had this big major operation and you're laid up for two weeks. We want you back to work very quickly. And we're but we also want you to understand the bottom line there is that lifestyle changes are necessary. I often get the question, well, when can I have this again? Or when can I have this again? This was my favorite food. Why, when can I have this again? My answer to that question is, is that there is no operation that is going to allow you to do exactly what you're doing now and be at a different weight. So you need to come to a realization that where you are now, you're in trouble. And there's something that you're doing now that has gotten you in trouble. 
So what we're going to help you understand is to be just as happy, or even happier than you are now, doing something different. So does that mean you're going to have to let some things that you're doing right now go? Yes. You cannot do what you're doing now and lose weight and be healthy long term. So our goal is to help you understand what those things that you're doing now that you need to get rid of and lead a healthier life into the future. So lifestyle changes are necessary. We want long lasting weight loss. This isn't just a short term, this is a marathon. We want you to have long lasting weight loss. We want to improve those medical problems long term, quality of life, self esteem, and just to give you a healthier life in general. And I often get the chance to, to show some before and after pictures. And I always want to say these are our typical results. And not, you know, those things you see on TV with the Jenny Craig's where they show you one patient out of a thousand that have been able to lose weight. These are what we, this, this is what we do every day where we get successful weight loss with almost every patient. And that's our goal. Long-term weight loss, 119 pounds with the sleeve, um, another 120 pounds with the sleeve. Seven months after gastric bypass, a patient that was on the insulin pump and very brittle diabetic, now completely off of her insulin pump and no longer a diabetic. 